So man-made riprap banks is an easy target to go try to catch bass at no matter what time of the year is. Today in this video, we're going to give you tips and advice so you can go be more efficient this spring when fishing riprap banks with a crankbait. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Bass Fishing Declassified and thanks very much for taking some time to join us today. We are going to be talking about one of my favorite areas to catch bass on and that is fishing riprap banks. Man, I love fishing riprap. Guys, I have caught so many good bass off of riprap over the years and we're going to get some good tips and advice on how to catch some fish off of them. Um, first of all, riprap is good all year long. There's not, I had, there's not a month of the year that I haven't caught bass off of riprap. But I want to give you guys some tips and advice on how to catch bass off riprap in the late winter and the early pre-spawn period. Now, in my opinion, this is the best time of year to catch big ones off of riprap because what happens is those bigger females, once that water temperature first starts to rise in late winter, like say you bottomed out at the coldest point uh, in mid-January and those temperatures are cold, once they start creeping up a few degrees, like maybe you know one, two, three degrees, there's some type of a sort of a biological, you know, sound or some, some type of biological rhythm that takes place in the fish, particularly the bigger females bass, that gets them moving more shallow. And it gets them moving shallow specifically on some type of steeper rock bank. And that's what riprap is. Riprap, riprap for the most part, is a steeper rock bank. So a couple of different things here. And I'm gonna talk about the baits here in a second, but I wanna talk about what to look for. Riprap comes in a lot of shapes and forms. It can come on bridge causeways, dam causeways. It can come just on man-made riprap or on boat docks, a um, lot of different areas. But the thing that makes one riprap better than the other is its proximity to deep water. One of the things you will find out that makes areas really good for riprap is you've got to have some type of deep water close by. Now that could be uh, a creek channel or just deeper water in general, but I've never caught a, a lot of good fish off of those areas that have shallow water right off the riprap that does not have any deep water close by. So the deeper access water that you have the nearest to the riprap is gonna be better. Now, like I said, this can come in any area. It can come on the main lake, it can come on the creeks, whatever like that. Now, the technique is really critical, guys. My number one uh, wintertime, early spring pre-spawn lure for the riprap is a mega bass flap slap. Now, if you guys talk to me much at all about bass fishing, you'll hear me talking a lot about the flap slap early in the year. It's my favorite crankbait to use when that water's still cold. The flap slap looks just like a threadfin shad. It's got, you know, fairly flat ba back. It's got what I would consider a medium wobble. And it's just the profile and the action and everything about it, the wobble and the wiggle and the vibration it puts out is really, really appealing to cold water bass, specifically around rock. Now what I'll do with this when I'm fishing riprap and the water's still cold is I want to fish this bait fairly slow. And in order for me to maximize that slow retrieve, I normally will put some type of a suspend strip on the belly of it because I want this bait to, to suspend or slowly sink. I don't ever want this bait to rise because what I'm doing is I'm getting on those riprap banks and I'm getting parallel to the riprap. Depending upon the angle of the bank, I'm wanting to target that three to five foot zone. So depending upon the angle of the riprap, I position my boat parallel to the riprap, I make a long cast parallel to the riprap, and I try to bounce this bait down into that three to five foot zone. Um, one of the things you'll find out about a, a flap slap is you don't necessarily have to be knocking the bottom hard like a lot of other crankbaits. Um, this bait is sort of like a hybrid crankbait jerk bait, so you can catch fish on the flap slap even if you're just reeling it through the water column, but I, I like to keep it closer to the bottom if possible. So most of the time um, I'm using this particular bait on the Mega Bass um, Oroshi Double X uh, Jerkbait Special, it's, which is a rod designed for jerkbait. It's got a fairly soft tip, allows me to cast it a long way, and I'm usually using eight to 10 pound test Seaguar and Vizex uh, monofilament line on it. Casting it out there a lot of times, I'll just cast it out and I'll just really slow it, just sort of like that. Maybe I'll stop it and I'll give it a pull. Sometimes I'll twitch it. But once I get that bait down into its maximum depth, which is about four to five foot, that's when I really want to slow it down. Now, condition-wise, you're going to find out that riprap in the early season works in a lot of different weather conditions. Um, I've caught a lot of fish in all different type of light intensities, sunny days, cloudy days, windy days, calm days. 
A lot of it depends on your water clarity. The dirtier the water, when that water temperature is still cold, the better you're going to have success on those days that have you know more sun, uh, bright light, and less wind. If you're fishing a little bit cleaner water, like water visibilities, say of over two and a half or three feet, you're going to do a lot better on those cloudy days or days that have a lot of wind on it. And one final tip I'll give you all is when you're fishing riprap, these fish can be anywhere on the riprap. They can be on straight, long stretches, but most riprap has some type of irregular feature, like some type of a turn if it goes underneath a bridge, maybe an occasional rock outcropping that's a little bit you know, different than the straight feature. Those are high percentage areas, so anytime you get to an, an irregular feature or maybe a lay down that fell against the bank, uh, spend some time targeting on that. But anyway, guys, riprap is one of the top structures you guys can catch bass on. It's a great area to catch some of the biggest bass of the year. There's been a lot of lake records caught off of riprap, and I personally probably caught as many four to eight pound bass off of riprap as any structure I fish. So give them a try, guys. Get you some mega bass flap slaps, put some suspense strips on them, get on that riprap, and I promise you guys will catch some good ones. Hey guys, if you are enjoying today's video, make sure to hit the subscribe button for us, please, so you don't miss out on any additional content. Also, do not forget about our one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons that we're offering at fishthemoment.com. With these virtual lessons, you'll have an opportunity to meet with one of our team members one-on-one -on -one through a Zoom uh, Google Meet call, and you will have the chance to ask questions, learn different techniques, and see how one of our team members will attack the body of water that you ask. Just think of that as an opportunity for you as an angler to grow and learn. I know with me as a coach, when I coached for 12 years, man, there were many times that I would go and meet and visit with other coaches, go to conventions, and this for you is an opportunity to grow and learn as an angler. I know you can watch all the videos that we offer, and which is great and we really appreciate it, but just by sitting down and having you know, list questions there and just getting the feedback from the anglers, you will get something out of it that will make you a better angler. Throwing a crankbait on riprap is one of my favorite ways to fish during the springtime. We know that the riprap grabs sunlight and therefore retains heat and that draws fish to it. But more importantly, riprap is put there by humans, generally speaking, to get from one point to another point. And what that does is it creates pinch points that funnel the fish. So if you're talking about a causeway or a bridge, maybe you've got a, a, a like a retention wall or a wall that's been created around a marina. You know, generally speaking, what this does is it creates pinch points, which means the fish are swimming into a creek. They hit the causeway. They got to follow the causeway to get through the bridge. And therefore, there's a lot of fish that are traveling along the riprap walls. Now, having said that, riprap can go on for miles, literally miles upon miles, and therefore it's not going to be in your favor to get on a riprap bank and just go for miles. You want to try to identify the key areas among that riprap. That could be a point, it could be the ends of the riprap, it could be an area where the riprap doesn't go quite as deep, meaning in some places you may have riprap that drops into 20 feet of water, in other places, you may find that the riprap only goes down to four feet of water. And it's those changes amongst the riprap on the bottom of the lake itself that can draw a lot of fish to it. But you're going to want to try to identify some irregularities. Uh, it could be trees that are laying down on the bank. It could be a change in the riprap itself that creates a rock transition. It could be the fact that you've got uh, just all kinds of different sized riprap. So may maybe you've got like big boulders mixed in with the riprap itself and those larger rocks will create some fish holding habitat. The key here is you don't want to just get on a mile long bank of riprap and fish the whole thing. You'd be better off fishing the high percentage places and identifying them using your side imaging gear or just your visual eyes. You may see an area where you've got some lay down trees. Those are going to be key places to fish. For me, I prefer to throw big, wide, wobbling crankbaits like this Berkeley Money Badger. Uh, what I like about these is when you've got a wider, wobbling bait, they tend to deflect off the rock better than some of your other uh, crankbaits that don't have quite as much side-to-side -side motion. And that wide wobbling is going to do two things. First, it's going to deflect off the rocks better, which is going to make it uh, snag less. And secondly, because it deflects off that rock better, what it creates is 
more opportunities to get that reaction strike out of the fish. So generally speaking, I like to throw a wide wobbling crankbait anytime I'm fishing riprap in the spring because it's just one of those things that tends to trigger more strikes for me. So make sure the next time you fish some riprap, you don't just get on the bank and go identify the high percentage spots and you'll catch more fish. So when I'm fishing a highland or lowland reservoir lake and I see riprap banks, it's, it's always something that I look at first is where is it located. And during the early springtime period or that late winter springtime period, location to me is a key. And also the type of riprap that you have. First thing I look at when you're at, at when you're looking at the riprap is is it more of a flatter so a size of riprap bank, as in just more of a flatter slope or flatter point, flatter bank, or is it more of a steeper uh, rock bank? Because there are two different types. Those flatter ones sometimes can be a little bit harder to fish, and there's not much cover for them bass. And then where the steep ones can almost have too much water. So the type of riprap is a big is a big indicator if I'm going to fish or not. The next thing for me in the spring is the location. Is it is 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 it a spot to where those bass can stop before they get to their spawning areas? There are some riprap banks in some random areas, and guys, you can fish them, and you might catch them fish on them, but most of the time, you're wasting your time. It's just one of those good-looking banks. Banks, and in reality, sometimes the know-nothing banks looks better. So I'm going to look for riprap banks that are going to be on pathways or on your ways to where the fish can go spawn at. Those are going to be the ones I'm going to look at. Now, the two type of crankbaits I'm going to throw that I'm going to go target these riprap banks. If uh, for your shallower, uh, for my shallower crankbait, or even more of your flatter style riprap, I'm going to throw a lipless crankbait. I love throwing a lipless crankbait, and for me, that sh that lipless can target almost any depth I want to on it. But I'm really going to target that shallower side with the lipless. I will vary my retrieves up just to see, you know, if if the fish are wanting the different retrieves that day. But I'm not going to be afraid to throw that dude up there shallow. But I'm going to really try to pair parallel it and figure out the depth they're in. Now, the other way that I'll target these riprap banks, and it also kind of depends on the cover, you know, around it too. Sometimes in some of my lakes, there's actually grass that's right next to the riprap in the deeper section of the water. But uh, what I'm going to try to do is uh, my other crankbait I'm going to throw kind of style is to fish that deeper section of the riprap bank. I'm going to look where that riprap stops and where it meets the bottom. And if the bottom's mud or silt, uh, that's what I'm going to try to look for is that deeper section. And I'm going to try to throw the crankbait down that line. Used to, you know, you can get out there with um, get out there with your trolling motor and just kind of, you know, look at it with your eyes and throw. And you can still do that, guys. But, uh, of course, with live scope, it helps trying to find out, you know, that, that, that line that you're looking for, that transition line. Uh, now, depending on the depth of that, okay, and the water temperature, if it's still really, really cold and it's not, like, too deep, like 15 foot, 12, 15 foot, guys, I'm going to throw a wiggle wart, okay? Uh, but let's say it is it is getting warmer. Water temperature is up in that mid 50s range. I'm gonna throw and 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 I'm gonna throw and I just got some of these in the mail today, so that's why I just pulled them out from Tackle Warehouse. So I'm gonna throw the Spro Little John DD70. So this one it says it goes 16 to 20 foot. If you have the right line, it will go deeper. Right line rod setup. I like to throw this on Sunline 12 pound fluorocarbon. But if I really need to get deep, I, there has been times where I've put these deeper crankbaits on 10 pound line. Uh, so, but this crankbait here uh, is one that I'll throw from here on, okay? Like I said, when, when that water temperature gets at 55 and up, and I do want to go deep crank, and throughout the summer, I'm going to throw the Little John DD. Like I said, this is the 70 model, I'm pretty sure. Uh, make sure it is the 70, yes. This flatter style crankbait and this bill is great with rock, so I like throwing this around rock, and I'm going to target that, like I said, that transition line, okay? Now, when I'm trying to target that transition spot, I'm not catching a lot of fish typically. I mean, if I catch anything, it's going to be a big fish, and that's just what I'm going for. It's just some of them bigger fish that are right there on them transition lines. They're not getting targeted as much because it's easier to fish the shallower section than to go out there and fish that deeper section. So hopefully that helps. Just a couple ways how I will go uh, attack them rip rat banks. We appreciate you guys watching today's episode. Hey, leave us a comment. Let us know what your favorite tip was. If there's something you'd like to share as well that you think is a unique tip that you do. Uh, like I said, subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. Hey, and come back next week for the next episode on Bass Fishing Declassified.